This is Algebra 2, Chapter 10, Section 3, in which we will study geometric sequences in series. We talked about arithmetic sequences in series last time. A lot of those same concepts will apply to geometric. The difference is, instead of adding a common difference D, here we're multiplying by a common ratio R. So we have a different AN formula. It acts a lot the same as the other one did. Instead of addition, you have a multiplication going on. You still have your n minus 1, you still have your a1. Your d became an r. And it's multiplied instead of added. So let's look at a situation here where James receives a joke email. And he forwards it to four friends. And each one of them forward it to four more friends, and I say unique here so that we don't have overlap and we have to subtract out people. We're assuming that each person sends it to four different people who haven't gotten it already. Now, if the pattern continues, how many people will get it on the sixth round of forwarding? Okay. There's information hiding in here. We know the first term is four because he sent it to four friends. We know R is 4 because each one of those people is sending it to 4 friends. And we know N is 6 because we're doing 6 rounds. So now let's just plug the values in, do a little arithmetic, and we find out that after 6 rounds of forwarding, in that round there's going to be 4,096 people that have gotten the joke. I hope it was funny. Now we can also do, like we did last time, write an equation to find the nth term. What we need to know is a1 and r. Well, we have a sequence here. We can find a1. We can see it right in front of us. We need to find r. r will be easiest to find as the second term divided by the first. I would probably write that down if I were taking notes. Second term divided by first term. So now I know R is a negative 8. Well, now I can plug it in. I know A1. I know R. And leave the N minus 1 up there. Notice I'm not multiplying those two things together because powers come before multiplication. So be careful there. Okay. Let's do one where they don't give us A1. First we have to find A1 using the AN equation. So I plugged in what we know, and if N is 3 here, this the formula says N minus 1 for the power, so that became a 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. Do a little arithmetic. Divide, and now we know A1. So we can just plug into the AN equation. Since A1 is 1, you could technically live without putting a 1 here. I put it there just out of habit so that I always have my A1 there to work with. Okay. Just like last time when we talked about arithmetic means, there's something called geometric means that are uh, numbers between two values in the sequence. And we're going to approach it the same kind of way. All right, They're going to give us two values, and they want us to find four means in between. So I've got this sequence where I started at 0.5, ended at 512, and I've got four blank values. Just like I did before, I'm going to number those off. So now I can use the AN equation. AN equals A1, R to the N minus 1. Divide by the 0.5, and I'm going to subtract the 6 minus 1 while I'm at it. Now to get rid of that fifth power, I need to take a fifth root. And the fifth root of 1024, my calculator tells me, is 4. Now that I have R, all I have to do is start here and multiply by R to go across. So 0.5 times 4 is 2, times 4 is 8, times 4 is 32, times 4 is 128. 
So the blue values here are the four numbers that fit in the blanks. Okay. Just like before, too, we talked about an arithmetic series being the sum of the terms. Geometric series is the same thing. It's the sum of the terms of a geometric sequence. And again, we have three options. We can find all the terms and then add them together. And then, depending on what information we have, you have two choices of a formula. Most of the time, again, you're going to use this one, formula number two. Occasionally, formula number three is easier to use, and it's specifically if you know A1 and AM. Okay. We're going to do a little bit of solving here, finding the sum. We're going to plug in the values that we know. We know A1, we know N, and we know R. Now, according to our trusty sheet, we should use formula number two. So I'm going to plug in the values that I know into formula number two. Do a little bit of cleanup work. My calculator told me the top worked out to this beautiful number. Divided by negative two gives me a sum of 59,048. Okay. Remember we talked about before that geometric sequences, the numbers get big in a hurry because you're multiplying constantly. So don't be surprised to get big answers here. Okay. Let's do another one. In this case, they gave me A1 and AN. So my ch uh, trusty cheat sheet on the last page tells me I should use formula number three. Plug in what we know. Do the arithmetic. And then clean up, and we get 3,875. Okay. And then another parallel that we have from arithmetic sequences, we can use sigma notation with geometric sequences in series. Okay. What we need to know is the first term, the common ratio, and the number of terms. Well, the first term is to plug in the 4. So if we plug in the 4 for k, and do a little arithmetic, now we know what A1 is. R is going to be the value that's being raised to the power. So in this case, 3. And N is 9 terms, just like we did last time. 12 minus 4 is 8, plus 1, because that's how you find the number of terms there. You can think of it also as you got 12 numbers, but you're taking out 1, 2, and 3. So it leaves 9 numbers left. Now we have everything we need. We can plug into the formula number 2 because we have A1, we have R, and we have N. Plug in the arithmetic, or the uh, values, do the arithmetic with the calculator. And we end up with a sum of 66,426.75. If you had three quarters here, that would be acceptable as well. Okay. One more problem to look at where they give us SN and want us to work backward to A1. Okay. Well, I can see that I have N and I have R. What I don't have is AN, so I don't want to use formula number three. I want to use formula number two. Let's plug in what we know, and now I'm going to use a variation on this formula. I'm going to factor the A1 out in front. You don't have to do that in this first step, but at some point you're going to have to take that A1 and factor it out. Okay. Now it's arithmetic. Only that 8 is in the wrong place. Move. There. Turn that off. There. Okay. But do the arithmetic. I divided the 4 out, and then I can divide by that to get the A1 is 16. 
Okay. Notice the power belongs inside this parenthesis. I just had it typed incorrectly the first time. But that's okay. We can fix things like that. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in to ask, and we will see you in class.